without awareness life is meaningless we are coming to the end of the talks on the series of nana in this particular sutra the most important line is nanak says that which is is formless and that dwells in the realm of truth man is helpless but his helplessness is only as long as he is moving away from god the distance or the extent of the separation with god is the extent of your poverty and misery by god i do not mean any person it is the sum totality it is the harmony it is oneness as long as you consider yourself separate from the whole you are away from the god away from god and that is the cause of your misery and poverty as you move away from god life becomes meaningless and miserable in the west there have been many thinkers for whom life is meaningless for them life is a tale told by an idiot full of fury and noise signifying nothing if you look at your life this is how it will appear there is noise all around people are running aimlessly after all this you will find yourself after all this you will find yourself empty handed you can go on accumulating the world but in the moments of death everything slips out from your hands those who have built their castles on the base of this world will certainly fall you can go on giving false hopes one day you will certainly come to your senses moving away from god that is totality that is harmony is not much of a problem as going in the opposite direction whatever you are doing is taking you away from that harmony in fact you are moving in the opposite direction you can be far away and yet still flowing towards him that very moment a revolution happens in your life it is like someone who is swimming against the flow towards the source you are in the river yet still you are against the river the more you fight you will find the river is your enemy the river has nothing to do with you it is flowing unconcerned about you or anyone else it does not matter to the river whether you reach or not out of ecstasy the river is flowing towards ocean because of you the river appears your enemy because of you everything appears to be your enemy your entire life goes on saving yourself from enemies moving away from god not only signifies meaninglessness instead of a nightmare as well have you ever imagined the nightmare a nightmare means you want to wake up but you are unable to wake up someone has climbed over your chest you want to remove the person but you are helpless your hands do not move there is no energy left in you there is no way to save you you are unable to open your eyes such a dream is state is known as nightmare thinkers like kirk kirk god sartre 
etc. consider life to be a state of misery and there is no way to attain freedom from this state. Yet still there is another realm. This is the realm of the masters like Nanak, Kabir, Meera, Buddha and Krishna. Their lives are different to yours. There is a song, a dance, a celebration and this is benediction. In your life there is misery. Beyond misery is the life of benediction. This is the life of harmony, life of oneness with God. One who starts moving towards God or starts living according to the cosmic law, transformation happens in his life. Ego brings misery and fight. Ego thinks the more it fights, the more it wins. Nanak says the sutra or the principle of energy is his grace. Grace happens only when you are helpless from all sides. There is no scope for any cunningness. This deepens in you and reaches the deepest core of your being. There is no more lip prayer. Instead there is an expression of your gratitude. Your tears express it. Each cell echoes this feeling, then his grace becomes available to you. Lajja or ignominy or modesty is the total expression of the state of your helplessness. On what basis can you say that everything is the outcome of your doing? Your life says a different story. All that you have done in life has brought failure and nothing else. Yet still you never wake up. Your castles of cards have shattered. You consider yourself the doer. As long as the sense of doing remains, your understanding or modesty will not be born in you. Nanak says this modesty, such understanding is the prayer. As long as you consider yourself the doer and the knower, you will not eat. I have heard a Sufi story. The story says there were two friends who went to school together. Then by chance the life's journey separated them. Along Life's journey would became the emperor and other a master. The fame of the emperor spread far and wide. The master started wandering from village to village. His fame too spread far and wide. It happened one day the master visited the kingdom of his friend. The emperor made grand arrangements to welcome his friend. On the day, certain travelers told the master that the emperor wanted to show off. Out of arrogance, he has decorated the way with flowers. There is celebration all around in the city. The steps leading to the palace were decorated with gold. With all this, the emperor wanted to show off his wealth. Hearing this, the master responded, Let him do all that he wants to do to show off his arrogance. Then the master reached the kingdom. The emperor came to receive him along with his retinue. The emperor was surprised that his friend's feet were filled with mud although it was not the rainy season. In front of the crowd, emperor remained quiet. The two reached the guest house, where the arrangements were made for the guest to stay. When the two were alone, the emperor inquired his friend about the mud-laden 
feet. As this was not the rainy season, and the roads were dry, at this the master responded, If you want to show off your wealth, then I can also show off my spiritual powers. Hearing this, the emperor burst into laughter and said, Let us embrace one another first. None of us have reached anywhere. Our inner states remained the same. There is no change. The change has to come within. Remember one day emperor will reach somewhere. He is aware that he has not reached anywhere. But it will be difficult for the saint to reach anywhere. Sometimes you are arrogant because of the wealth. Other times you are arrogant because of your sacrifices. Nanak says one who is filled with modesty he is worthy of his grace. Because of your arrogance there is no need for God in your life. How can you attain to that for which there is no need in your life? English poet Lord Tennyson had said something very significant. He said, if I can know a small flower totally, then nothing else remains to be known. This is such a profound spiritual statement. If I can know a small flower totally, then nothing else remains to be known. If you have known the blossoming of a flower, then you have known the process of the blossoming of the entire existence. Because the tiny flower represents the entire existence. If you have known the beauty of, love, of a flower, then you have known the beauty of the existence. If you have entered the truth of a flower, then nothing else remains to be known. One who has known the drop has known the ocean. Qualitatively, the drop and the ocean, a single flower and the blossoming of the entire existence are same. Drop is the micro form of the ocean. If you have known the smallest particle atom, you have known the whole. But, do you, what, but what do you really know? All your knowledge is borrowed. It has traveled through so many hands. You read the scriptures, books or listen to someone. But you do not know if the person you are reading or listening has experienced himself. You do not know one who you are listening or one who you are trying to understand is real indeed or not. No knowledge, no action. You are no more. There is nothing to support you. This state Nanak calls as the state of modesty. And when this intensifies, His grace will start showering on you. Modesty or lajja or ignominy is like the valley and grace is like the rain. It rains on the mountain as well. However, the mountain remains deprived of it. Valley and the holes get filled with the rain water. Nanak says for him no one is high or low, worthy or not worthy. His grace showers on all equally. Be like the be a lake. Like the grace will start falling on you. You become the lake of awareness. The way your being will change. Nanak says in the realm of grace, word of the master is energy. In the realm of grace, the word of the master is energy. Beyond this, there is no energy. The word Nanak uses 
is beautiful. As soon as you attain to modesty, grace starts happening. Poor becomes the emperor, and by grace, even the lame can cross the mountain and blind can see. Here Nanak is not speaking of an ordinary lame, blind and deaf. As long as you are full of ego, you remain blind, deaf and lame. Also your heart will remain stone-like without any ripples. Your life will be like a lamp whose oil is finished and flame is flickering. Your full potential will not surface. With ego as your guide, there will be no rhythm and harmony in life. You have an infinite reservoir deep within. You are unaware of it. You do not know the passage to it. With grace, something strange happens. When you are no more, when you dissolve, only then you are worthy of something. You go on saving yourself. The more you save, the more your life will remain meaningless and you will go on drifting from that which is. This is the logic of the saints. One who saves himself remains a loser. Those who are willing to die on their own death of evil have known the neck. Grace occupies a very significant place in life. In the realm of grace, energy is the symptom. Carlos Castaneda in his book Tale of, Tales of Power he speaks of this fourth realm of grace. The moment even a single ray of God descends in your life, tremendous energy field is generated around you. Then whatever you touch, then whatever you touch turns out to be gold. A man overflowing with grace is like the one who extends no magic. Before him even the trees become alive. Now even your shadow will have the magic. Wherever your vision goes, the doors of infinite treasures open to you. Around you there will be a new aura and the fragrance of the blossoming of the bee. Nanak says bee, commune of the masters, saint and sages. Such company is gracious. Be in the company of one who has discovered the source of life. This is contagious, but of a different type. Two things happen simultaneously, the sickness and health happen. Whenever you go to such a company, something happens. Sadness transforms into happiness. We are not aliens, we are not strangers. Instead, we are bound to each other by a causeless force. There is a power within that knows beyond our knowing. Nana gives too much importance on such a company. Nothing can happen on your own. You have to go to the company of those who have attained. Through the Master, it is God who is touching you. Where would you see God? However, you can be in the company of the one in whom God is intense. He has accumulated God within like the ray of sun covering at one point once these passes through the mirror. The moment grace starts descending on you, there will be tremendous energy. However, this is not your doing. And if arrogance comes to you, that very moment the flow 
of grace stops. Ego is very subtle and follows to the very end like a shadow. Remember shadow has no sound of its footsteps, of its movement. Just as physical body has its shadow, so too ego is the shadow of consciousness. Physical body has a shadow. Ego is the shadow of consciousness. You would have heard one who attains to God leaves no shadow behind. He does everything like anyone else, but none of these have any impressions. Now consciousness is transparent. When grace descends, you can be no more. You will be an instrument for something to happen. There will be emptiness within and out of this emptiness will echo the whispers of the unknown. A float, the float is empty. It is a simple, simply an instrument. It has nothing of its own. It is hollow within. It creates nothing. It simply echoes the song of the one who plays the flute. The moment you are empty within, there is no desire of your own. That very moment grace flows like the whispers of the unknown. Kabir says he is simply a flute. All songs belong to him. He sings and Kabir is the instrument. An unknown energy is the expression of this realm of grace. There only the ultimate energy overflows. Grace happens like an immense magnetic field. And then anybody who comes in contact is pulled towards it. In spite of your efforts, you start getting pulled. Such is the effect of the energy field. There is nothing beyond this. The moment you attain to this, you overflow. Those who are overflowing this energy, something strange happens. He starts overflowing a different energy. Just as along with Ram, Sita also descends. Ram and Sita are symbols. That too, these symbols are very deep. Ram and Sita are not the two Hindu deities. Ram and Sita represents two poles of the same energy. Just as for the magnetic field, both North and the South Pole are needed, so too for divine energy, Ram and Sita are two complementary poles. Male energy alone remains destructive, Without the grace of the feminine energy, Ram remains incomplete. Feminine energy brings a balance. Masculine energy is destructive. Feminine energy is creative. She is connected to the very source of life, where both the energy of the sun and moon merge into one another. That is the realm of Ram and Sita or Yin and Yang. A flower hangs on a tree. It is being nourished by the energy of the sun and the energy of the moon. And together it brings the ripeness and the sweetness. The sun's energy ripens the fruit and the moon's energy brings the sweetness. There is a particular art of preparing a medicine according to Ayurveda. In that case, you take the bishop's beads, which is one of the herb, very important, fragrant and used profusely in East Indian cooking. It is soaked in the lime juice and kept in the near the window for the sunlight to come in. And then 
during the day when the sunlight is there it is it remains soaking in the lime juice and in the evening when the sun is no more and moonlight is there it is kept in such a way that moonlight falls but it is taken out of the lime juice this process needs to be continued for a period of 2 weeks and after that this bishop's bead is taken weeds are taken out from the lime juice and allowed to dry it becomes a strong medicine that enhances the eyesight because the two energies have created a balance within ram and sita yin and yang shiva and shakti the symbol of shiva is a symbol of harmony merger of the masculine and the feminine energy the yin and yang these symbols are nothing but symbols of totality we create the symbols or use the language according to our own group you have been brought up to understand a particular language maybe spanish when you speak you will speak in spanish language you thank someone you will say a word from the spanish language gracious someone will say thank you the other will say dhanyawad all these are expression of gratitude these are symbols the gestures behind this are important we need to understand where both the energy of the sun which is masculine and the moon energy merge into one another balances one another that is the realm of ram and sita that is the realm of harmony that is the realm of oneness this is symbolic this is deep hindu understanding many other sects have not been able to understand this christians muslims jain buddhist have not been able to understand ram and sita standing by side what kind of god is ram who is standing by the side of the female sita this is very deep thought is very deep a hindu thought recognizes two aspects of energy one appears as woman and the other appears as man one activates the woman is considered as the field of activity and man or the masculine energy is the one that activates the energy the feminine energy is generated from you look at the car body the feminine energy is generated from the body of the car battery the car the negative pole you can just connect to any metal which is electrically sensitive and the positive energy comes from outside one appears as a woman and the other appears as a man together they create the balance thus whenever anyone attains there is union of two energies the entire secret of the golden flower of master lu su the chinese master is based on the merger of the two yin and yang masculine and the feminine energy thus whenever one attains there is the union of two energies ram and sita radha and krishna shiva and sati represents the transcendence beyond male and female the male in you has become the cosmic connected to the cosmic energy the moment your electrical pole the positive one is connected to the national grid the positive current begins to flow and the moment the electrician 
reaches it with the negative pole, the transcendence happens. Out of this union, when the two merge into one another, one step, one another step deep within, one evolves. Such is the understanding of the Master. And then nothing can glorify the ultimate integration. And then nothing can glorify this ultimate integration. You can glorify a male or a female, but how would you glorify that which is beyond both male and female? Where both Ram and Sita merge, no description is possible. No description is possible. In Japan, there is a statue. The half face of that is that of Buddha. The hand near the face carries a little lamp. The night falls on the half, other half face of Buddha and creates energy, the feminine effect. There is a sword in one hand and as the light reflects from the sword and falls on the face, it becomes that of a warrior. The two aspects are together. And samurai worship this statue. In this statue, both aspects are merging into one another. A Hindu not only puts Ram and Sita, Radha and Krishna together, but uses the feminine name first. Feminine energy is creative. It symbolizes compassion and beauty. And when compassion and valor merge into one another, no description is possible. One in whom one in whose heart Ram dwells, they are beyond life and death. They dwell in the realm of perennial bliss. None of continues. Try to understand this. Try to understand this, you are death bound. However, there is no death of God. Wave comes and goes. Right, arise and dissolve, but ocean is always. As long as you identify yourself with waves, you are dead. Waves consider their identity separate. Death is inevitable. Just like waves, one day your identity will disappear. You have dissolved in a wrong identity. The moment you are connected to Ram, you are beyond death. This is the reason that the learned one dies before his death. He dies the moment he consciously, he dies the moment he, he severs all finite connections. He knows that he is neither the body nor the mind. These are death bound. Also ego is death bound. Like waves, they may look beautiful, yet still they will not be one day. This is what conscious death is. You are dying to this moment. This moment has come. You have done all that was necessary to be done in this particular moment. But this next moment, this moment will not be there. You have to solve it. The moment you wake up from your deep sleep, you will find that you have established that you have established a wrong connection with your body and all that is associated with it. If you look at your body carefully, you will find every seven years your entire body changes and yet still you are. Your body has undergone tremendous process of transformation. One day you were in mother's womb when your body could only be visible through a microscope. And then one day your body will be cremated. Your family will carry the ashes to submerge in the holy rivers. That too is your body. 
because of your identification with your body you will remain afraid of death why severs all connection with the finite consciously this moment yes i can perform my duties my responsibilities the acting role that i have been given for the people who are on the stage the family members the friends the disciples the seekers but it is only an acting i am performing a role for the continuation of the process one day it happened that no one could find nanak anywhere then someone said nanak was seen going towards the cremation ground people came to look for nanak and found him in meditation under a tree in the cremation ground someone asked is this the place for meditation people meditate at home they go to the mountains to meditate why are you meditating in the cremation ground nanak says this is the final place where one has to come one day why to come riding the shoulders of someone that is why i have come here to meditate all meditation is of death what else is meditation if you meditate if you meditate on death one day death will disappear as your meditation deepens the superfluous layers of death disappears wave disappears and you will find the ocean you will discover the reservoir of nectar deep within Buddha used to send his monks to cremation ground to seek enlightenment observe the burning pyre you had relied so much on the body within no time the body is consumed by fire this will be your situation as well one day monks you stay there for three months day and night observing death in that state he finds something deep within alive and awake something that cannot be destroyed by any means fire cannot burn the consciousness then inner journey becomes easy your residential areas are the cremation ground and cremation ground is the last residential area where you dwell till eternity last what you call as the residence everything will be taken away one day however from the cremation ground whatever place is given to you nothing can be taken away that is the institution for training a child goes to the school he attends a class and if he fails a particular standard he stays in the same class same standard until he passes the examination to move to the next standard something like this happens in the institution of life unless you pass through that consciously you will have to remain in the same class again and again until you recognize the nectar of life you will have to come back again i have heard once a musician was playing music and each time he sang an an anonymous voice echoed each time once more each time the audience said once more the singer sang this happened eight times then the singer said this is the last time i am going to this song as i am now tired hearing this the someone is stood from amidst the crowd and the singer was thinking that his song is so beautiful that people are appreciating and asking him to repeat again and again but the man who stood up from the crowd said we are saying once again because you are not singing it correctly 
and we go on repeating once more and we will continue to repeat once more until you can sing correctly. This birth and rebirth is God's way of saying once more. Just as the audience, the person, he kept on saying once more, once more, because the singer was not singing perfectly, so too your birth and rebirth is God's way of saying once more. This is the way of training. You have to go through this. One who understands this will go beyond death by breaking all relations with death. One whose inner being echoes around never dies and is not robbed of inner serenity and peace never dies. No one is robbing you, instead you are robbing yourself. As long as you are holding money, you will have enemies. As long as you are after the status, you have enemies. You think the other is the enemy. In fact, your desire to hold on to the money and the status is your enemy and wrongly you consider the other as your enemy. You can have tremendous money, but if you are not holding it, no one is your enemy. No one is your enemy. Nana continues. One whose being echoes around cannot be robbed of inner serenity. In the realm of grace dwells many devotees of different regions, overflowing truth, they are ever 